I'm Frank. And I'm Anthony. And we're with Rodeo Rewind. And today, who are we with, Anthony? We're with Kate Harrison, who's an announcer for PBR and PRCA on the television. Uh, how do you yeah. prepare for an event? Yeah, so. so much goes into it. And that's why I tell everyone wanting to get into the business, and you guys know doing this as well, it's all the preparation happens during the week with the phone calls to the writers, with our production calls. So when you get here, sure, you got to be able to go with things as they change or unfortunately injuries happen. but. There's so much that goes into it during the week. Um, when it's PBR team season, yeah. I've got stat sheets on every team, every single player. I could tell you anything when it comes to riding percentage, buck off percentage, their best rides of the season, their quickest buck offs. And that's just kind of the big picture. There's so much in the nitty gritty. And then when it comes to sidelines for me, it's all in the storytelling. And it's not just telling the stories that you see this week, but you got to think not only the new fans that tune in and out, we've got fans that have been with us for years and years. So I want them to feel like they're constantly learning something new about each of these guys, but then also give new fans a reason to care. So it's all about preparation during the week and then being able to react to what you're seeing when you're sure. here. Sure, and we plan at, ahead of time and we get our press releases ahead of time. Exactly. We kind of know when we're looking, we watch mm -hmm. it on TV. We travel. We're, we're, we're doing live, much less than you, you know, because uh, he's a student, I'm a teacher. Yeah. Uh, during the summer, it's much more. But we always try and think about what is the story that we're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed that it's about the story. Mm -hmm. If we just talk about rides, we don't get as much interest. But when we talk about, like, what do they like to eat, you know, or... Uh, if we were like hoping to talk to Bob and it was like more than just a mustache was our theme. Yeah, right? and, I love that. There's you know? so much behind so it. That's and, how we do it. And well, I just don't know if we're on the right track or not. Well, well, of course you are. Look what you're doing here together and you're doing it as a dad and a son. I love that. But what everyone sees in the arena, that's eight seconds. But a lot goes into that eight seconds. Not just what they're doing during the week in the practice pen, but every rider will tell you it's so much mental. Yeah. That means everything that's happening with their families back home, with their day-to-day -day lives, yeah. getting to these events, getting back home. That all plays into what you see in the arena, and it's my job to make sure everyone understands that because everyone here has a different story of how they got here. Yep. And it's a different path that they're on to get to that gold buckle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it makes it really fun. And you become a fan of every single guy because everyone's got the heart for this. They yeah. all want it. They all crave it. And you want it for all of them. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask. So you're, you're a uh, Western sports athlete. Mm -hmm. How important is that in helping you to, to understand the narrative that you or the direction you want to go? Isn't it so neat how things come full circle? I remember sitting in class in college and them just talking about sports. And at that point in time, everyone wanted to do football, right? Mm -hmm. That was the place to be is Aaron Andrews on the sidelines. Yeah. And I had one of my mentors tell me, well, what sport do you know better than anything? Like the back of your hand, go chase that. And well, that was rodeo, but that was, I'm going to date myself here a little bit. How many years ago? 15 years ago. There wasn't that many opportunities in media and rodeo 15 years ago. I thought, well, I know the sport I know best. There's not a whole lot of opportunities there. But I always thought about that, and it always stuck with me as I covered so many college sports. And then sure enough, about seven, eight years ago now, it comes full circle, and I'm back to it. But going back to your original question, I didn't yeah. forget it. Um, I think it's huge because it gives a foundation. I understand what these guys are going through. I mm -hmm. understand what it takes in the practice pen every single week. And yep. I grew up rodeoing just like a bunch of them did. Mm -hmm. I craved it as a kid, and I love it, and it's part of me. And it's the same for these guys. Have I ever gotten on a bull? Absolutely not. Is that a good idea? No. I got on one steer when I was younger, got the wind knocked out of me. Never again. It was a bad idea. But when it comes to every other event in rodeo, I get what it takes and the hours that you put into this. And it does. It gives you a different type of understanding of what they're going through. Yeah. And then so uh, with the, all these changes in rodeo mm -hmm. with the team series and now breakaway roping, uh, what do you think of all that being an athlete and an announcer? It's promising. It's promising and it's exciting because with change is growth. Mm -hmm. And with the amount of growth that we've seen, it means people are really loving it. And sure, it takes a while because there's not a lot of change in rodeo. So it takes a while to get people to buy into it, mm -hmm. but they have. And I think the biggest thing is if the riders bought into it, and they have, and they love it. Um, and we love Unleash the Beast, but there was something about just them putting on jerseys and having a whole team on the back of the shoots with them. I've even had some fans stop me and say that they've missed the jerseys and the cheering and that camaraderie. So um, I think change is good. And then breakaway roping, yeah. 
being able to see what to me outside of bull riding is one of the most exciting western sports which is how fast it is and yeah. how yeah. quick can those women stop the clock yeah. um and seeing it where it should have been a long time ago it's it's good do you guys love it i know you were we, talking yeah, about yeah, the breakaway we, roping yeah, how can we you love not? breakaway roping it's yeah. just so fast and everything you know uh and it, it, it's it's fun we're trying to get more and more uh female athletes mm -hmm. to that i just think it's important for us to to mm -hmm. have that opportunity and to share it with people. And so, they've always been out there. Yeah. I, Jackie Crawford, Larry DeGuy, they've always been out there winning and roping the way that they are now. The camera just hasn't been on them right. the yeah. same. So, yeah. And it's good for the young girls because there's a ton of kids that come yes to bull ridings, but I guarantee you when I was a little girl in the stands, I wasn't thinking, oh, I want to be like that guy in the back of the bull. Yep. I was thinking I want to be roping like Larry DeGuy, right? Yeah. So it's good for the young girls in the stands that are either wearing a cowboy hat for the first time or they grew up in one to say, hey, I want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're it's, welcome. It's, we, we just love what we're doing and we're trying to share and grow the fan base. Okay. Who got into it first? Uh, Who loved the... The rodeo, the bull riding, all that first. I don't mean to turn this around on you, but I want to know. <laughs> or is it a mutual? Well, so I grew up in the Midwest. Yeah. So I, I was very aware and, you know, uh, and we grew up in an ag area. I teach in an ag area. Uh, so I think uh, I showed him a picture of uh, his first uh, PBR event years ago. And uh, he's, he's little and he's yeah. got a picture with Silvano Elvis. And he learned to say thank you in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. How do you say it? Do you remember? I I don't remember. Don't remember? <laughs> yeah, obrigado. Yep, obrigado. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Good that's deal. How, that's yeah. how it went down, and now we travel all summer and and hit the road, and this is our start of our third season of doing yeah. the YouTube. So it's great. Well, keep on coming, so we can we'll keep see seeing you, you guys on the road. Yeah. Bring the jackets. Yes. Every year, everyone yeah. asks where the coldest place is. I don't think it's New York. When that door opens, because what a lot of people don't know is that as soon as the bull riding starts, well, when the bulls have their eight seconds of fame, they go right back on the trailer, yeah. eat their grain, their feed. It's time mm -hmm. to take off. So the big door is open in these stadiums. So a little note to first-time fans. If you're sitting front row in one of these cold places we go to and you're closest to where the trailers are, you're going to feel it. Yeah. I think Chicago is the coldest place when that wind gets to roll. it's dusty in there. It, right. It's very dusty mm -hmm. in there because of the, what they use for that. But it is a yeah. good crowd. Yeah. It is a yeah. fun crowd. Well, good. We'll see you in Chicago. Yeah. We'll chat again. Yeah. Perfect. See you in Chicago. That sounds Thanks. good. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> I'll pass right. your mic back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I wish. I mean, I don't know. You've, you've known us for a year now.